Okay, now we'll be looking at the second video here covers impact of climate change on the natural system. So we'll be looking at the general natural systems that uh, get impacted due to changes in the climate, climatic conditions. Okay, both in terms of atmospheric global surface uh, temperatures in the sea and more importantly in terms of circulations in the ocean. So this actually this graph here actually shows the divergence of global surface temperatures. Uh, similarly, we're tracking 1880 to 2020, right? So you look at uh, what has happened, it has actually constantly increased uh, after the initial dip uh, from about 19... 1880 to about the 1910s, it was on the downward trend after which it's been on a fluctuating upward trend. And notice how this trend seems to also mimic the earlier graph we saw on CO2 levels from 1880. So there is no way you can run away from you can run away from the fact that human and human action is the key cause of atmospheric temperature change. Okay, rise. Global warming is a human phenomenon. Right? So why is it that there is such a big hoo-ha when we are looking at oceans itself? We need to understand that a lot of the uh, ice on Earth is trapped as polar ice, okay, polar ice sheets. Although we have uh, mentioned earlier that there are natural cycles in which the quantum of polar ice sheets and your glaciers on top of the mountains actually vary, but a lot of this is still trapped as polar ice. Now, the, the key difference is one degree. What happens between the zero degree and the one degree? At that point, what happens? Okay, you, you may just think you may be thinking that it's just water. Yes, but can you imagine all the polar ice melting because the overall temperature has just crossed to the point where at the poles it is now no longer sub zero. It's permanently above one degree. What will happen to the amount of water that the oceans will have to hold? Will the amount of land that we have uh, available for development will coastal cities still be able to be uh, above sea level. These are the key problems that we need to deal with. Okay. Now, you also need to understand that if you look at a map like this, right, there are always moments of anomaly. Right? There could be local conditions that allow or there could be due to a lack of data uh, or the lacking in data in terms of the data set being incomplete, you can have anomalies. But when you're looking at these areas here, you have to also understand that the heating of the ocean is uneven okay as a result the whole ocean doesn't heat up at the same speed or the same rate with unevenness brings opportunity for currents to move okay movement from uh remember when we talked about land breeze and sea breeze earlier on right what what is the difference is temperature turning the pressure difference okay so when you are looking at ocean current okay ocean circulations you have to remember ocean circulation is not a self-standing thing Okay, ocean circulation is the movement of water within the global ocean uh, circuit because all the oceans are linked together. So certain areas that are colder, they will be moving towards the areas that are warmer. The areas that are warmer, they're moving further away towards the areas that are cooler. Okay, so this forms a cycle of movement. Now, because the ocean surface temperature is different, right, the atmospheric temperature above it will also be different. And that actually churns our atmospheric winds. So whether it's a global wind, regional wind, okay, these are the two main types of winds that are affected when you have ocean circulation change. So think about it, what kind of global wind did we talk about earlier on in topic one? Okay, we talk about monsoons. So can you imagine if when you have uh, due to heating of the oceanic currents, your circulation of the oceans change? What will consequentially happen to your monsoons? Okay, can you imagine if your monsoons intensity change because of the changes experienced due to ocean oceanic current movement, be it faster or slower? Right? Can you imagine your monsoons becoming more intense? What would the implications be then for nature, terrestrial nature? What would the implications be if the monsoons become less intense? Will there be impacts on human, human life, farming, agriculture? So the intensity of monsoons is highly dependent on this idea of ocean circulation. Okay. Next, the next impact, what happens when you have too much rain on 
the land-based ecosystem. Okay, terrestrial is land-based, right? So basically, when you have excessive rainfall, you are looking at one key problem, flooding. Right. So remember, when you're always looking at the different impacts on land-based, land-based ecosystems, when you have excessive rainfall, it's going to flood. So things are going to get flushed down into the oceans. Things that cannot get flushed down, that cannot survive the flooding will die. It will drown, they will die. Be it human, be it animals, be it plant life. Okay, because terrestrial ecosystems are not meant to live within a, a watery surface. Okay, they are not meant to be submerged in water. Otherwise, they will be aquatic, not terrestrial. Okay, so when you have extreme uh, impact, Okay, or excessive rainfall, uh, what it would mean is flooding and it would mean that terrestrial species tend to disappear. Now, bear in mind that when you have excessive rainfall, you're not always looking at suddenly the total amount of rainfall in the year increase, but it could be more extreme conditions. So you can have, during the rainy season, a lot more rain. Okay, two, three, four times the amount of rain you receive in a regular rainy season. Then consequently, during the dry season, dry season, the dry season is extended outwards, long, lengthwise, so you can have an even longer drought. So these are the key things that you need to remember when you're looking at impact of excessive rainfall on terrestrial systems. Okay, can we do without water? Once again, uh, so when you look at excessive rainfall, what's the problem? Everybody drowns and dies. If you have no water. If a drought situation that is long lasting, you also have a terrestrial ecosystems collapsing. Plants will die, there'll be no food for the animals, animals will die, there'll be no food for the humans, humans will die. Okay, so we cannot do without water, we cannot do with too much water either. We are really, really troublesome. Okay, so with that, can you move on to do question two? of your topical assignment. Okay, think about what we've covered here. You refer back to your textbook. Let's look let's look at um question two of your topical assignment. When you're done with that, come back for part three.